Hello everybody and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be walking through the initial process to begin upgrading from CUCM 12.5 to version 14. Now I broke this up into two separate videos, mainly because once we did the, um, the initial pre-check and then getting to the installation or the upgrade of Communications Manager, it was too long of a video. So I wanted to separate these two out. The first one, this video, being where we walk through the install and upgrade guide. We take a look at the COP files that are required prior to the upgrade of CUCM and we get them installed. The second video is going to include jumping right in and upgrading from version 12.5 to version 14. I hope you all enjoy this video and let's get into it. Before we actually get started with the upgrade of Communications Manager Note 14, we want to quickly take a look at the Upgrade and Migration Guide for Unified Communications Manager. It's important to do this because depending on what version you're coming from uh, and then going to, there might be additional things that you need to do like uh, installation of a different COP file or you might actually have to upgrade the underlying OS uh, before going through the, the version upgrade. So as you can see here, um, when you're going through this guide, it explains the different upgrade methods, uh, direct standard upgrade, which is what we're going to be doing going from 12.5 to 14, uh, is just an upgraded version, right, where you don't need to upgrade the underlying OS, whereas a direct refresh upgrade uh, is where you actually do need to up upgrade the underlying operating system uh, before doing the, uh, doing the migration. Now, since we're going from 12.5, we can scroll down here and you can see the upgraded supported paths and cop files that are required. Uh, we're going from 12.5 to 14, so we can do the direct standard upgrade, which again means we don't need to upgrade the underlying OS. And there's two ways that we can do this. We can either do it via the admin or uh, CLI interface, or we can use a tool called Prime Collaboration Deployment. Now for this video, we're going to be leveraging the OS admin, and I also want to show you what the upgrade looks like through the CLI. So before we get going, let's run down the quick checklist of things that need things that are required, right? Before we actually do the installation. Now, what we want to do first is run the pre upgrade check cop file. And as this is installing, I want to explain what the cop, you know, why this is important. Uh, the other thing that is required, and again, this is why it's important to reference this guide, is because there's an additional COP file that needs to be installed if you're on, version, if you're on a version that's older than what's listed here, so 12511490063. So if you're on a version that is older than that, you have to install this additional COP file. Now, the question is what happens if you don't install this COP file? and you go through the upgrade anyway. Well, the upgrade's actually gonna fail. Uh, the reason I know this is because I did that and it failed. So just make sure again that you reference this guide before actually going through and upgrading again, once again, just to make sure that you, you get everything that you need to. Now, once, um, once you've addressed this and you downloaded all the proper files, it actually has the upgrade tasks. So again, it, very good job of explaining everything. Again, what the COP file pre-upgrade uh, checks um, and whatnot. Like I said, we'll be going through this a little bit more uh, when, we, uh, when we actually do the upgrade. And cluster by reboot sequence. Once you get the COP files that are required installed, how do you actually go through the upgrade and what that looks like? And again, that's all gonna be explained in the video. So just wanna point out here, this is a great, great, great tool in your, um, in your toolbox. Again, definitely make sure you check this out before going through the upgrade process. Now that we've reviewed the documentation, we know what's, what's required, let's, let's, jump into the, uh, let's jump into the upgrade. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the COP file, the pre-upgrade checklist. To do this, um, we typically operate out of the CM administration for a lot of different configurations. Uh, however, to do the install of the COP files, as well as um, the install and upgrade of the actual version of CUCM, we want to be in the OS administration. So let's go ahead and log into the OS administration.
Now, inside the OS administration, you're going to see things like being able to make changes to your network config, see server information, um, and whatnot. But where we want to be is uh, software upgrades and install and upgrade. So once the page loads, um, we're going to select the, the source, whether it's going to be from the CD, DVD, um, a remote file system like SFTP or NFTP server, uh, or if it's locally installed. As you can see, remote operating system uh, for myself, fill out the necessary information. Um, and if you've done this before, it will, a lot of the um, server information as well as username and password will be, uh, will be filled in already. So once this page loads, uh, we'll see a, all the files that we have or that I have on the um, SFTP server. Uh, and basically, CUCM is going to point out what files are invalid uh, to be used. So you see there's a number of uh, different iOS operating systems and whatnot. Um, but up at the top, you'll see at software location, this is going to be all the compatible pieces of software that are on the SFTP server that work with CUCM. So things like the COP file uh, and upgrade, uh, upgrade files as well. So we'll click that dropdown um, and you'll see there's the upgrade file, there's the pre and post uh, check. We're gonna select the uh, pre-check and then we'll click next. And once this page loads, uh, it's gonna be the, begin the download process of the um, pre-upgrade uh, pre uh, COP file to go through the readiness check. As you'll see here, it'll display, just check the, the file name, the MD5 hash, as well as the SHA value to make sure that you're, down, that you're about to install and run uh, the correct file. So everything looks good, we'll click next. And this will begin, begin the installation as well as running that pre-ready assessment. Uh, once the pre-ready assessment's done, you'll see that it'll list out uh, everything that passed the test, if there was any uh, warnings uh, during the, the readiness check, or if anything failed the readiness check that you need to address that could be a hindrance during the actual upgrade process. So as this runs, just a real quick overview of what's actually being looked at during this readiness check. Um, it's going through and checking things like network services, so IP connectivity, DNS and NTP connectivity. Uh, if you're running it in FIPS mode, uh, if it meets the password length restrictions, uh, things like uh, VMware tools compatibility. Is this version that we're about to go to compatible with the version of VMware tools that we're running? Uh, it's going to check to make sure that we have enough disk space for uh, version 14, uh, as well as database authentication, uh, database sanity, and a number of different other things. Again, this is all explained in much more detail in the um, upgrade and migration guide, but just wanted to give a quick look at what's actually being, um, being checked here during this process. Now this does take a few minutes uh, to run, so you know, take a break, go grab a cup of coffee while this, uh, while this does its thing. Now as the test finishes up, what you'll see is uh, a summary of how many total tests were run. So in this case, you see there was 14 total tests run how many of those tests passed, how many of those tests failed, and if there's any warnings. So as you can see, we, have, um, we do have a couple of warnings, uh, as well as we do have one failed test. Now, if you're looking at this output going, okay, now how do I see what failed? How do I see what passed or what warnings I have? Um, if you notice there, there is a uh, text file that we can open up inside the CLI to gain more insight to what tests, what were the tests that were done, uh, including what warnings do I have and what has failed. So let's jump into the CLI and take a look at this text file. Okay, so now that we're in the CLI, we're gonna go ahead and log in with our uh, admin username and password for the CLI. And then once we're logged in, we can paste the file view install pre-upgrade report that we got from uh, the readiness check in CUCM. 
And as you can see in this file, uh, it shows the active version, the server, uh, as well as whether it's a publisher or subscriber. We also see the test results. So we see that uh, we passed the database sanity. There's a warning uh, for the DRS backup as well as there's no actual backup device configured. Uh, there's a warning for a cluster database status check uh, and it recommends that we run that, uh, run that command. And we can also see where exactly we failed. So we could see that there was a network, uh, network adapter type. Uh, the existing network adapter type is unsupported in higher versions. Uh, so we need to change to VMX3 in order to continue the pass. Um, and we can continue on down the list of different, um, different services and different checks that were run just to make sure that uh, everything looks good. And then again, a summary at the very end, 14 total tests run. 10 tests were passed, three tests had warning, and the one failed, And as we've seen up at the top there. So once we're done reviewing all this information, if uh, we've passed everything or if our warnings and failed are gone, we can then move on to the next step, which is the installation of that other security cop file uh, that we've seen was required when going from 12.5 or the version of 12.5 that we're on to 14. And again, we got that information out of the uh, installation and upgrade guide for CUCM. But before we do that, what I want to do is run through the readiness check one more time, but go through via the CLI, because I know there's a lot of people out there that love the CLI, including myself. Um, so I just wanted to run through that real quickly to show you what it's like to do an upgrade and install via the CLI. Now, if you don't want to see that and you're happy with what we got here, you can go ahead and skip to the next section where we go through and install the uh, security cop file. So to get started doing this through the CLI, what we want to do is start off with the utils command. Um, and this is going to be for any system configuration. So we'll do system or utils system. As you can see here, we'll do upgrade. Um, and then we want to do initiate. Now you'll notice throughout this whole thing is that you can use the tab and question mark just like in any other Cisco IOS device. Um, so we can tab and question mark our way, our way through this. So as you can see here, we go through the system upgrade initiate. Again, very similar to the, G, the, the graphical user interface. We're gonna choose whether we're gonna do the uh, secure FTP, uh, FTP local, uh, local image, or we're gonna use the CD slash DVD. Now, since we have it installed already, uh, we're not going to take the time of re-downloading it from the SFTP server. So we're going to use a uh, local image. So we're going to select option four. And after we make that selection, we're going to see we're going to have a lot of the same questions that we got when we went through the graphical user interface. Um, so we're going to select no to the upgrade. After download, we're going to select no to the switch version, again, because we're, we're not installing uh, CUCM 14 yet. We're just going through the pre-ready check. And as you can see here, it shows us the available options. Uh, so we're gonna select option one for the pre-upgrade check that we have installed on, um, on CUCM already. Again, it's gonna validate to make sure that this is the proper file we're installing and running what we assume to be the uh, pre-upgrade check. So verifying with the MD5 and the SHA value, uh, we're gonna select yes. And a lot of the output log that you've seen in the, uh, in the GUI when we did this is gonna be outputted here as well. So once that's finished running, uh, you'll notice that we get uh, similar information as we did when we ran it through the GUI. Uh, 14 tests run, 11 passed, two warnings, one failed. And once again, we could take a look at the pre-upgrade ready report.txt in the CLI to get a better understanding of those warnings and what did fail. Uh, so now that we did the pre-readiness check, we're gonna go ahead and install the next required cop file, which will provide support for SHA-512 signed iOS as well as uh, SHA-512 signed cop files. So we're gonna log into the OS administration and this is going to be pretty much the same process that we just did for installing the um, the readiness check cop file. We're going to go to install and upgrade. And once that loads up, again, we're going to select where we want to pull that file from, uh, whether it's a remote uh, file system, local or CD, DVD. 
Uh, we're going to do remote file system and we're going to select a secure FTP uh, and we're going to uncheck the upgrade after installation. And again, once again, very similar. Uh, we're brought to the page where we're going to select the specific file. As you can see, the listed files are the pre and post upgrade check, but we're going to select the security cop file here and click next. It's going to download it and it's going to present us with making sure that this file is the file that we want to install and run. Uh, it's going to present the SHA value, the MD5 hash, and make sure again that this is the valid file. So looking over everything, everything looks good. We're going to go ahead and click next and begin the installation of the cop file. As you can see, the installation of the cop file has been complete. We're now finally, finally ready to start the upgrade process for CUCM 12, 5 to 14. We did the pre-ready check. We installed the cop file and now we're ready to get the upgrade uh, upgrade underway. All right. So just a quick recap of where we started, where we're at now, and where we're going in the next video. In this video, we started out by installing and running the upgrade readiness COP file. After that, we installed and ran the SHA-512 COP file that's required from going from version 12.5 to version 14. And in the next video, we're finally gonna be going through the upgrade from version 12.5 to version 14. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.